Good morning, my name is Gareth Field, and you're with me for episode one of Gareth Gets Roasted, because someone did an 18-minute code review of my Master Blaster project, which is just crazy, uh, and I'm a little nervous, not gonna lie, but if you want an open world, you gotta be a little vulnerable, right? But I think it's vulnerabilities that we may be hearing about soon. <laughs> uh... Yeah, so let's get into it. Um, this guy, Daddy Codes, I'm his eighth subscriber, and this is him roasting me. Oh god. Uh, I've got a coffee, ready to go. Oh lord. Oh, and I will be bopping along to uh, Joji's Nectar album, if you want to bop along with me. Starting right... What is love? Okay. Um, just gonna turn the volume down to six. Oh God. Okay, I've got my code. In the other window, somewhere. Mm. E. Oh, I haven't looked at this in so long. Here we go. Hi, today we are going to do a code review of a repository called Monster Blaster by the user Twitch Kid. Now, this is a project that's purpose is to rename your main branches yes so for example if you want to rename your own master branch to something else like oh no i can't concentrate branch, on music and this i thought this that was going to be a thing to but the most obvious thing when you look at the code and the readme and whatnot is that there are a lot of these kind of warnings warning this is not guaranteed to work <laughs> And if we even look at the code, first thing that the author makes sure we see is that this comes without <coughs> warranty. So it's yes, please well. don't delete all of your even code. <laughs> run the code. The first thing that prints out is the same thing. That this comes without yes. warranty. Yes. <laughs> please do not sue me if you happen to delete all of your code with my <laughs> project. Something that potentially destroys my version control. <laughs> I would make bloody sure that it works as it's supposed to work. So, using something like this on a version control, which contains business critical software's source code, uh, not recommended. I probably skip it. <laughs> but I wonder that where this comes from. Because as a developer, like we we should be able to trust our code, right? Uh. So. so when it's going through all of your repos? Does not trust his code or her code at all. I think that it boils down to this. It's <laughs> one thousand lines of procedural code. So this is all that you have in this project. So just lots and lots and lots of different foreign if loops and. Mm -hmm not that many abstractions mm. and zero tests for <laughs> and if you I don't know how to test code, which we are not going to do because it's 1000 lines long oh uh, you will see that like this, this is really low level code and it's a procedural code so it's really hard to test this kind of code because you don't have these kind of testable entities as you would have with for example object oriented code or you don't have uh, testable pure functions that you would have with functional code but you just have a code file that starts from somewhere then it does a bunch of stuff and then it exits right uh, <laughs> the last thing is it literally system does exit so how could we reason about this code right uh, it's it's 1000 lines long you cannot simply as a human being developer, you can't just read 1,000 lines and then start reasoning about this. It doesn't work that way. 
I mean, uh, one person wrote, it's just too much code to read. It. There's a lot of comments in there. So, I think it's pretty clear now that why the author thinks like this. But how could we fix it? So, oh, I think great point. He I connected this like code as written from bottom up, right? And what I mean by that is that you are doing lots and lots of uh, low level stuff here, but you only have one or two levels of abstraction on top of that. And even those abstractions are, are like, uh, they are just regular function calls. So what I would do instead, as a thought experiment, we could describe this functionality from looking from the top down. And let me show you what it means. Okay. So this is Replit, and this is a Python repo, which means that I have a Python file here on the left, and it runs in my browser, and anything that is outputs will become visible on the right. So, for example, I can do something like print hello, and then it should appear on the right. Okay. So, if we would start to describe our software here, so so project that takes one repository, let's start with step one, and then it changes its branches name. Right, so uh, first of all we probably need to know the, the new branches name, so uh, for simplicity's sake uh, I will have to use the dynamic nature of the Python, and let's just do something like utils uh, is an empty object, uh, sorry, dictionary, right now in Python. Sorry, my Python might be a bit rusty. I haven't done this in... Uh, me too, my friend. So, so uh, forgive me if, if uh, you see anything weird going on here. But, yeah, so then when we have this empty utils dictionary, uh, we can start writing kind of pseudocode with Python. And then, like, just like... Just is this going to be the object-oriented approach? Program does in code. And then let's worry about the implementation later on. Right. So let's say that uh, branch name, or new branch name, right, equals utils dot uh, ask user for branch name. Cool. So now we have the branch name. And then we probably would need to have a repository. So something like ask user for repo link. If we assume that the repository is now some kind of object that we can use, then we could do something like repo dot change no name branch name, and then we give it the new branch name. Right. So this pretty much describes everything that we want to do. And it's just, well, basically three lines of code. So this amount of code is really easy to reason about. Right? We have a couple of functions with pretty clear names. Of course, naming can be also always better, but, but I suppose this gets the point through. Uh, however, this is not everything that the uh, project does, because uh, what the project actually does, the master graph and blaster project, is that it lists all the repositories from GitHub that you have, and then you can uh, you can select from those uh, projects, and then it will block the master branches of those projects. So let's implement that in our uh, utility <laughs> pseudo language, shall we? He said the thing. So now instead of asking for repository from the user. Uh, we probably want to have some kind of repository for our repository, which is now GitHub. Um, so, well, let's just use GitHub, shall we? So, we probably... It's the whole thing, because you need to do like three extra GitHub steps for a GitHub branch. thing, because you need to update the GitHub default branch, let's not worry and... GitHub login works yet. <coughs> but, uh, let's assume that we have some kind of API client for the GitHub. So this is fascinating, by the way. Has in, we can list all the repositories of this person. All repos. 
a false key cut prime dot list or repos. Cool. Uh, we still under ten lines of code, so it's all looking good. All right, dude. <laughs> and then uh, let's jump back to the users again. Uh, let's ask for the user that which ones of these repositories would they like to block? <laughs> okay, let's do just that. So we want to have selected repositories, and then we have something like users dot select repos, and then we'll pass ask in user for repos do select. Cool. Uh, we're still under ten lines of code, and to make it official, then we just need a one for loop, right? So for repo in uh, selected repos and something like that. Okay, mm. so it still should be valid Python. Uh, of course, it doesn't work if we try to run it. It throws some kind of errors, but it's looking quite good because that, this is this should be the yeah. I, I ran it, it, it crashed because the, the object, uh, object doesn't have the uh, for friend name, so we just had first from the users, just as we expected. But uh, still, this amount of code is something that we can read them about. Uh, this reads quite well, and if this would be kind of the main file of the project, I would be delighted. Uh, one thing I almost forgot is that the Master Blaster current project it handles both your local Git repositories and your GitHub remote repositories. So then we can't just just assume that that we have the GitHub here. Uh, so let's do yes, it's quite complex. Yeah. <laughs> I would think that instead of like having one code that goes first to your local repositories and then goes to your online repositories in GitHub, for example, they are just repositories, but they are located in different places. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Good point. That the abstraction there that abstracts repository sources, like whether it is GitHub or your local file of a system, or if it's for example, uh, Bitbucket or uh, GitLab or, or whatever. So I'm not sure that they have the concept of the default branch. Like GitHub, uh, I would probably use uh, something like let's ask the user for for the source, right? So repository source is users dot ask user for repo source, and let's use repo for source. Yeah, so then we can dis the uh, GitHub and then we can do the login towards the repo source and then this would be something like repo client, right? Now you're still with me. So so let's go through this okay. line by line. Uh, we just first ask for the branch name, right? Then we ask for the repository source. So whether you want to blast your local branches or GitHub branches. To begin with, for example, then Oof, you way too much some coffee. Kind of login uh, or configure, for example, because if you are local, if you have local repositories, then you probably want to just select the folder which contains all of your local repositories, and if it's the remote one, which would be GitHub, then you probably want to log in and do stuff like that. So, so we use something that this has for us, then which would be something like configure. That returns a repository client for us, uh, then we list all the repositories, so this would be kind of an abstract client, which can be either your local client or the remote one. It lists all the repositories, and then we ask the user the, to select the wanted repositories. Mm. Uh, we could probably optimize it by passing in the branch name to like like remove the repositories that already have that name branch. But anyways, that could be done later on. And then uh, from the source repositories, we just loop that through, and then 
do the oh yeah so we don't even need these ones anymore so we're back to under thin lines of code nice to deprive the whole functionality of our uh, system and this is basically the B of our system so everything that we do boils down to this line of code right so so we change that <coughs> That's the most important thing is here. Uh, utils, well, of course, this, this is rather like bad naming. Don't ever use just screen called utils. Uh, this would be user input or something like that. So, because all of these functions are asking for user input, right? So, now we would have one module that handles the user input. We could mock the user's input and and then uh, find out ways to, to answer this question, for example, in a predictable way. I think the thing that was used here, it was called something like question... Questionary, yeah, it? yeah. Uh, questionary, yeah. So I think this project had pretty well-defined tests here, so where can I go to Utah? Um, tests and then test on or something like that. Uh, questionnaire form. Uh, so yeah, so I think this repository is pretty well uh, has means of testing the user's input and then kind of checking what what it does with the input by giving the input using a test like like. You don't need to manually type in the input in these tests. So if you want to uh, test this kind of user input, uh, you can check how this repository does it. Another thing uh, here is that we have the abstract repository source. And this repository source is, again, something that you can write tests against. Uh, you can probably test all of this with mock uh, or fake repository sources and fake user input just to just make sure that it works the way you are supposed to. Since you have under ten lines and ten lines of code, it's pretty easy to even as a human being to assess that this is working as it should be. Right? We get kind of a big good features of object oriented programming by using this kind of approach to our coding because then we can start mocking or faking these uh, objects that, that we have here and then bit by bit work our way towards uh, a working complete system but if you have if you have functions or procedures so to speak that are only 10 lines long then it's much much easier to reason about them and to assess that these things do what we intend them to do a quick edge note, this commit history, just to point it out, oh no, <laughs> this guy's commit history, commit messages, pretty well. Uh, you can check the previous uh, YouTube video for uh, how to write a good git commit message, <laughs> but just to point out, uh, this kind of uh, git commit message points out that you're probably just hacking things together and not worrying so, so much about any kind of readability or, or maintainability because this this kind of looks as messy as the code that, that's in the beta folder. Oof. But all in all, uh, I think uh, the cost and the idea behind this project is really good and you should uh, definitely check it out. Oh, thank you. Uh, this is all I have for you today. Uh, if you have any comments and Especially if you disagree with me, please leave a comment below because I love to be wrong and I love to learn new things. If you like this video, please subscribe and have a nice day and happy coding. That was so awesome. Oh man. Wow. That guy was so nice. And he was right. It was all a mess. That was a really good idea for cleaning it up, and way of thinking about it, and I learned so much right then. And I need to rewrite my program. <laughs> um...
Wow. Whoa. Whoa. All right, thank you, dude. Everyone go subscribe to that dude. That was fun. I'm gonna watch the other videos. <laughs> At first I was like, am I gonna watch this guy, like, review someone's code? Like, is this gonna be... But no, that was really organized, and he had, like, a, an idea and a theme, and he went through it very smoothly and everything, and oh my god, I need to rewrite my code <laughs> and code differently. Oh, what am I working on right now? The MOOC and virtual garage sale oh lord Whew. okay well thank you for coming with me for that that was an experience and uh guess we'll see if i, I can push a version two at some point with some tests wow Okay, have a great day, everyone. <laughs> Thank you for watching. I love you.